There we go. Hi. What's up? How's it going, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I had a picture of The Rock I see you back here. You're the first one to see it. Okay, <laughs> Matt, I swear to God, I've been doing this now for three years at this radio station. I put that up as a joke. Well, it's it's uh, Sean Austin. Oh, uh, uh, so, so cold. cold. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cold, so cold. Yeah, that's I right. That's right. A, I put it up as a joke three years ago and not a single person has ever mentioned it said anything about it you're the first one to do it man oh, <laughs> there you go <laughs> i can't i can't express you how happy that makes me because like i said man, every single time every time i start one of these things i'm always like are they going to notice the fact that stone cold steve Austin's is behind it's me? even better than stone cold but it does like at first glimpse it looks like the rock but now i don't it think it's his it vest well, like, yeah. There, yeah, so. oh okay yeah 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 from where I'm looking, I'm telling you. <laughs> I tell you, man, this is this is the best start I've ever had to any sort of conversation. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Look, we can get into wrestling all we want, man. But at the same time, we got to talk to you right now. It's Matt Thomas. He is from Parmalee. Man, I am absolutely excited to get a chance to talk to you, brother. And the reason why is because, you know, I've been doing this now for a number of years, being in country radio and whatnot. And as soon as the reps came down and said, oh, we got a chance for you to talk to, uh, to Matt from Parmalee, I was like, I have never spoken to him before. So, yes. Please. Well, thanks for having me, man. Of course, brother. Love it. See, that's the thing. Now, let's uh, let's talk real quickly because I know, obviously, there's only limited time that I can have for you. And I spent the first five minutes screaming at you about the post in the back there. But, uh, okay, the latest single. Oh, yeah, um... good, <laughs> I love <laughs> it. All right, the latest single right now, Girl in Mine. Obviously, the latest single came out. Now, granted, it's not like it's a brand new single. The song's been out now for a number of months. We did play it. We have a segment here on the station, so while in Calgary, that is called uh, While It's Hot or Not. Okay. Uh, played that one and once again it got the same response that most Parmalee songs do have because like I said as well take my name man we still play that song yeah like, people, people love the sound man I know man it's crazy take my name has been like a, a monster for us it's like it just took a life of its own on and still like recurrent top 10 recurrent it's on uh pop stations down here like now top 15 so it's uh it's kind of living on its own and, and uh, it's been, it's been crazy. It's, it's awesome though. And uh, you know, with the sound with, with girl in mind, we felt like it's the trilogy because we started with just the way you had to take my name and you know, girl in mind felt like the, you know, it's, it's the next chapter in that, that little trilogy of stories. Um, so it's been fun, man. And, and you know, now that the weather's kind of starting to come around, it's March, you know, we'll have springtime and summer. I think, you know, that song should fit in on everybody's playlist, especially if you ride with the top down. What is like the timeline for? Because I, I remember back in, I think it was December when uh, I, I won't say who it was, but but another artist released more of a summery sound. And uh -huh. I was talking to some of the reps. They said, "Oh, I really wish they would release this song in the summertime." It's like, yeah, but if you do it now, it's ready by the summer. So, what is the timeline of releasing a song like that? I mean, you know, we released "Girl in Mine" what in like September, or August, or September, yeah. and you know, that's been then. But but I think you know because take my name was doing so good it kept going it kind of it kind of stuttered us a little bit on this on this song out the gate but uh i mean yeah you you're definitely not going to just unless you're a major artist and you're coming out with a major worldwide debut it still takes you know for somebody like us time quite a few months so what's this been you know six months probably but yeah december's a great time to drop a summer song because it's going to take a minute for people to start you know unless you do like i said you have some massive you know, roll out and it's just there and it's everywhere at one time. But for most songs, it takes a little, little, you know, groundwork to get things going. And, and the most important thing is, you know, still to this day is having a friend share it with you. If you heard the song, check this jam out. That's yeah. really like, and that sometimes takes a little bit of time and, and, and you know, a few months to get going. But I mean, I, honestly, now it's the perfect timing for a song. Well, actually, now here's the thing, actually, because you just kind of said it right there, but like with word of mouth, how much, what is it like? Obviously, like, you know, Parmalee is not a brand new band. You guys have been around since 2001. So it's not like it's brand spanking new. You've been doing it yourself as well, along with your brother there. Yeah. I know you had a band with your dad yeah. like, kind of to start things off also. How much do you guys credit word of mouth? Is it luck? Is it skill? How does the whole thing be like, you know, Parmalee all of a sudden gets a huge, like, like burst up? It's all of it. I mean, I will say that this day and – it, and this will always be the factor. The word of mouth is the best, honest, most honest, like way to hear about something. And I think that's, that's really where it starts. It, you know, now obviously you get social media and a million people could see it, but you know, they can see it. But if somebody takes the time to say, yo, you got to check this jam out. I love it. 
and they mm. send it to somebody and then they go, you know, that really is, that's the most honest and effective way, I would say, you know, that, that groundswell of, of songs or artists or anybody, you know, just. When you guys first started, so obviously early 2000s, so this is before a lot of the social media stuff and whatnot. It's been, it's been forever. My space, man. My space. <laughs> my, my space, yeah. That was a big thing. You, Dude. just Timberlake, all of it. <laughs> we blew up. I'm telling you, we had a million plays on Carolina on MySpace. It was like, oh, you know, but I had my buddy up there just being friends with everybody. You know, it was that thing. We had him running it. We were getting friends at Tom, you know, all that stuff. But it was great. Um, yeah, Tom was the best, man. I remember having Tom yeah. as a friend, too. <laughs> so everybody's friend right up there. Everybody was my best friend, that Tom guy. But actually, so obviously, like, you know, MySpace was the big one, obviously, for you guys when you first started off. Right now, TikTok, like, I, I can't express to you how many times now I'll be on TikTok. And all of a sudden, like, I'll see an artist or a song that has, like, 14 million views that I've never heard of this artist before. Yeah. So, like, what's it like now that you guys are like, is it like, all right, uh, let's release the track, get it onto TikTok, get it on Instagram, and then we'll see what happens or what. Yeah. Well, we did that with this for, with this album. We just, uh, with the For You album, we were releasing it because it was like quarantine. We were just like trying out songs. And yeah. and that's that's kind of how we tested a lot of songs. But we also knew like the songs we were putting up there were pretty solid top to bottom. I mean, the hardest thing is that how do you translate all those listens to somebody paying to come see you or to making a real fan? Mm -hmm. you, you know, I'm a real fan out of it because, you know, otherwise it's just, somebody sees you in passing, but you want to make them fans and you want to have them keep coming to shows and, and create this relationship, you know? So I think that's the hardest part about those, you know, quick views and those things like that. Um, but it's, it's awesome to be able to have that platform to bounce stuff off of, because you might not think a song, you don't know, you just let the people decide. And if it like, take my name, we put it up there, a little snippet and then we just got blown up immediately. I was like, there's something there. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. What's it now? I don't know if this is on purpose or if it's not, but there's one thing that I keep on noticing. As, as the music director, this is one thing I always notice is whenever an artist does this. The songs you have, there is no instro or no instruments at the beginning. It goes right into you guys singing. Yeah. Why? Right. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I know it's a stupid I mean, question. I'm like, is to be honest with you, you know, you, you got, I mean, usually your, your hook, your chorus is the best part of the song. Yeah. Give it to them out of the gate. And then they're going to want to come back to it, want to come back to it. And I think it helps the listener just, you know, immediately kind of catch them. But it's not – these three songs just happen to be that way. And I know we, we had some people ask us, we need some runway to talk over and everything. Hey, that's no problem. We can edit in the song. We edit in the music easy to put – you know, to give you an intro. But it's just been our thing, man. It's been working. And, and um, you know, obviously that comes up in the writing room every day. We're in there and you've got people pitching you songs or ideas and they're just like – same stuff but yeah you know, if, if it works i think there's a there's a magical formula for that and if it calls for it i think you just use it not that you would do it in all the stuff but you know some songs really kind of lend themselves to it you know matt i apologize because i know the questions i have are kind of all over the place but it's because i've never actually had a chance of speaking to you before Dude, I'm, I'm good man <laughs> I, no, like I said, I appreciate because I know for the most part, like the professional side of a lot of these things is like focus on just the single and go from there where it's like, yeah, but I've never, <laughs> never spoken to you before. So all good, everything yeah. goes all over the place. Uh, Jerry, Tom, uh, Jerry Thomas and the Thomas Brothers Band, which is the first band you had with your dad there. Yeah. What was it like having to kick your dad out of the band? Oh, man, he his uh, his wife at the time, she came to him and said, don't you think you want to stop messing around like on the weekends? I think she, you know, kind of had to talk and then it went along a couple of years later. She, she taught, he was back at it, you know, but we, we just, uh, we, it, it was, it was cool. My dad, you know, we played with him and, and I think once we started writing our own material, me and Scott Barry and Josh, um, mm -hmm. we all kind of played in that band together. Uh, but we just got tired of playing to his crowd and his old, the old folks. And so we wanted to start, sure playing for fraternities and all that kind of stuff and sorority parties and college gigs, you know, when we were uh, doing it. So it was, um, it was kind of like a good split and we would do, we would play shows here and there, but it was, uh, it, it was cool to be able to, he, he kind of passed the torch on us and told us it's like, like, I'm not trying to, this is just a weekend every once in a while for me, you know, you guys go ahead. And, it worked out. Yeah. 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 It, it was cool. We learned a lot from uh, being in a band with him and I had some real good times. When it, when it does come actually to being in a band with your brother, I right then and there think about Chris Lane, because I know his yeah. drummer is actually his twin brother. Yeah, and much I've like himself and Thomas. Like, oh, Colin. It's funny. Uh, yeah, that's, it's, I remember I, the first I, saw him, I saw him backstage and I remember walking past, this is like years ago at like a small venue before Chris Lane got huge. Mm -hmm. And I passed by his brother. And I said, like, hey, Chris Lane, he goes, I get it all the time. Nope. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then Chris Kim's around. I was like, you were just... And it clicks, right? Yeah. And again, this Too is coming funny. from a guy. 
who, who's still new in the country. I'm like, do what, do whatever you can to not make an ass of yourself. And the first <laughs> big artist I meet is his brother. I'm like, Chris. He goes, no. I'm like, okay. So. Uh, yeah, he's he's got that his whole life. Trust me. I mean, I I've started it. I've started conversations with him and like kind of in passing on style. And I was thinking it was Chris and kind of started out. Oh, this cop. <laughs> I like actually, actually, and you guys are both from Carolina as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So that's one thing I love. Actually, we had him here during the Stampede, which, by the way, if you've never been to the Calgary Stampede before, it's a big party, uh, nonstop music. But uh, I, I had a chance of being backstage with Chris, and we were talking. I, I told him that story as well, and he's just like, man, he gets it all the time. But then we got into the conversation about sports, and I don't know if you're a sports head like, like you know, the, some of these other guys from Carolina, but man, I, I get run around the track sometimes with some of the things I think I know. Nah, man, I, we're we're more uh, we're more the music guys. We played sports growing up, but just it didn't stick. Once we got to college, we were like music and girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's a transition right there, yeah. right? I mean, uh, so like I said, I know the questions all over the place. You got the single there with Blanco Brown. It's called "Just the Way," which, by the way, was huge here. I, I believe it was a number one hit in Canada. So yeah, it was awesome. Now, man. With the touring thing, because obviously, you know, here in Canada, we know who you are. When are you coming up north, buddy? Oh, we're coming. We're on the way. We got the whole, the whole tours lined up. Let's see. It's uh oh, let me get that. I had it. I had it. I see. I asked you this question knowing I wasn't ready. So the uh, I, July 14th, Country Thunder, Saskatchewan, Craven, that, August 4th, big, big Valley Jamboree. That's Canada, Ontario. Yeah. August 18th, Country Thunder, Alberta. There you go. That's us. That's it. There August 18th. Okay, yeah. we'll see. I'll get to 18th then, man. Looking forward. Oh, Actually, yeah. I, I will say this too. Country Thunder just started uh getting big must have been seven years ago here in Alberta. I, I'm probably off with my times, but uh, I mean, shoot, like this year or last year, who were the big ones? We had Florida Georgia Line right before they went solo and uh, obviously a number of other bands as well. So you will not be disappointed with the Country Thunder crowd, my friend. Well, I know the, the ones out here are the biggest parties ever, and, and we haven't been to Canada since these songs hit. So I'm, I'm oh. super excited, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a big old party. The best is whenever anybody, and I know you haven't performed, you've never performed in Canada before, but uh, we had Bailey Zimmerman when, because obviously he was just getting started. Yeah. We one of our um, country award show here called the CCMAs, which is the Canadian yeah, yeah, Music yeah. Award Show. And he was in studio with us and we're like, when was, like, have you ever been to Canada? He goes, I've never been to Canada before. This crowd is nuts. Like, it, right. it throws everybody cool. off. <laughs> one of my favorite really things about this. Anyway, buddy, I look, I'm going to let you go because it has been 15 minutes and I know that was my time. But well, like I said, I certainly appreciate the fact that, A, you let me ask random questions because I just get excited to speak to the new artists and all that stuff. Like um, I said, I'm the music director here, so I can geek out about music forever. And I love hearing the background story, so I appreciate it. And yeah, uh, shout out to Chris Lane and Con Lane there, man. <laughs> they look alike. So cool, man. Yeah. We'll talk about you, man. We'll see you guys August. August, brother. Absolutely, man. And then, like I said, I know the right people to talk to. I'll make sure to get backstage and bother the hell out of you guys. Come on. <laughs> hey, buddy. Matt Thomas from Parmalee. Appreciate the time there, brother. Later.